Here, we find ourselves at Sketchy U's annual acapella sing-off, where the ketones are battling it out against their arch-rivals, all the high notes. And while all that's unfolding, I'll be in the back row performing an operatic aria about the reactions of ketones and aldehydes. Oh, I'm just kidding, I can't sing. <laughs> I hope I had your word, though. To set the stage, let me introduce our real key players. This karaoke lover never misses an opportunity to steal the stage. His key-shaped pendant should help you remember ketones. In contrast, in the shadows, talented but shy Al is hiding. He's a master of falsetto, which is why he's a member of all the high notes. He's here to represent aldehydes. Both ketones and aldehydes contain carbon-oxygen double bonds called carbonyls, kind of like this double-barreled microphone stand with an O-shaped microphone. Carbonyls are important because their carbons have large partial positive charges. That's shown by the cord and tape coming from the end opposite the O-mic in the shape of a partial positive sign. That partial positive charge on a carbonyl carbon draws in nucleophiles just like this freshman new kid who can't seem to keep himself from moving in on the microphone. Ooh, yeah, that's, uh, that's embarrassing. But conveniently, this new kid's onstage fiasco looks a lot like what happens when a nucleophile attacks a carbonyl carbon. As the nucleophile bonds, two electrons from the carbon-oxygen double bond kick up onto oxygen. This means the carbonyl carbon will now have four single bonds, so it takes on a tetrahedral shape, like this sadly split microphone stand. Now we're going to look at a few different nucleophiles and the various products formed when they attack ketones and aldehydes. We'll start with some of the most important nucleophiles that attack carbonyl carbons. Oxygen-based, water or alcohols. This suspiciously unlabeled bottle our new kid is carrying is there to remind you of water and alcohol. Who knows which is in there? When water or an alcohol attacks a carbonyl, one of three kinds of products will be formed. A hydrate forms from one equivalent of water, like the water spilled on the floor, attacking. An acetal is formed by attack of two equivalents of alcohol, like the two blades on our tipsy singer's goofy hat, and a hemiacetal comes from one molecule of alcohol attacking. That's why the acetal hat singer is also hemi-dressed. Must have had just enough alcohol to forget his pants. It's also important to keep in mind that all three kinds of products are formed reversibly. That means that under the right conditions, they can revert back to the original carbonyl in the ketone or aldehyde. The reversibility of acetal formation reactions can be used as a trick when making complicated organic molecules. Let's say you want to do a gnarly multi-step synthesis on a molecule that contains an aldehyde or a ketone, but you don't want that aldehyde or ketone to change. In a situation like that, you can add a diol molecule to the aldehyde or ketone to form a cyclic acetal. This acts like these protective headphones on that surly antisocialite. He's not going to react with anyone while wearing those. Similarly, cyclic acetals are pretty much impervious to reaction. The most common kind of cyclic acetal is a five-membered ring. Our antisocialite's square headphones and pointy chin should remind you of that pentagonal shape. Then, once you're done doing your synthesis, adding excess water and some acid catalyst is all it takes to break the cyclic acetal up. So, you can get your original aldehyde or ketone back. Just like this guy can easily pop those headphones off and rejoin the concert. Sugars use this trick all the time. Carbohydrates have both carbonyls and alcohols in the same molecule. That means intramolecular cyclic hemiacetal formation can happen. Carbs actually spend most of their time wrapped up as cyclic hemiacetals, which prevents them from undergoing unhelpful reactions at the carbonyl carbon. Next, let's see what happens when an aldehyde or ketone reacts with an amine nucleophile, which uses nitrogen rather than oxygen to attack the carbonyl. The giant tub of amino protein powder that this resourceful drummer is jamming on should remind you of amines. And his set list will tell you what happens with different types of amines. 
If the amine is primary, meaning it only has one R group bound to the nitrogen, its two hydrogen atoms will be lost, and an imine will be formed. An imine has a double bond between nitrogen and carbon, a lot like a carbonyl. The fact that the first or primary song on the set list is I mine should help you remember that aldehydes and ketones react with primary amines to form imines. If the amine nucleophile is secondary, so it has two R groups on the nitrogen, an enamine will be formed. An enamine looks like an amine attached to an alkene. Know what I mean? Ah. Anyways, you might have noticed the secondary song on the list is public enamines to remind you of this. Seems like spelling isn't an emphasis at SketchyU, but I hear all the students are studying for multiple choice exams anyway. Finally, let's see what happens when an aldehyde or ketone reacts with nasty, nasty hydrocyanic acid, or HCN. We've represented the ultra-toxic hydrogen cyanide with this proud dad's plus sign hydrogen hat and his CN triple zipper jumpsuit that some might consider toxic to their fashion sensibilities. When HCN reacts with an aldehyde or ketone, it forms a cyanohydrin product which contains a tetrahedral carbon, hence the tetrahedral arrangement of dad's arms and legs as he cheers for his son. And... That's it for our melodic reactions of aldehydes and ketones. To recap, aldehydes and ketones contain a carbonyl group, which has a partial positive charge on carbon. Nucleophiles are drawn to that partial positive charge. When they attack the carbonyl carbon, a tetrahedral product is usually formed. Some of the most important nucleophiles are water and alcohols. When these attack aldehydes or ketones, hydrates, hemiacetals, or acetals can be formed. Forming cyclic acetals protects aldehydes and ketones, and in fact, sugars exist as cyclic hemiacetals for protection. Primary amines react with aldehydes or ketones to form amines. Secondary amines react with aldehydes or ketones to form enamines, and HCN will form cyanohydrins. Well, no one bought tickets to hear me blabber, so it's time for me to sit back, shut up, and enjoy the show. See you next time.